Thinking aloud. Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. And as I recall, uh, since, uh, in fact, many years ago, courtesy of you, I interviewed Shenzhen Young. Mm -hmm. he, he makes a point of, of saying, if, in addition to the pain, notice if there's an attachment or an aversion mm -hmm. to it, an emotion associated. Yes. And, and realize that it, that emotion isn't you, that's just an attachment or an aversion. Now, you've just talked about upping the level of the meditation, so, okay. <laughs> Beyond at first, kindergarten. <laughs> at first, you just want to notice what these sensations are. Yeah. Eventually, you'll be noticing them in more detail. Like I said, you know, if I pay attention, there was a boundedness to mm -hmm. this sensation in my hand, and sometimes it got bigger and smaller and things mm -hmm. like that. A lot of body sensations can get very interesting this way. Yeah. Eventually, developing this most easily, not necessarily the only way, but most easily from the body, you may start to be able to apply it to emotions. Mm -hmm. Yes, I feel anger. Hmm, that anger actually has several components, and part of it is a physical tension, and part of it is a fear sensation, and part of it is a jealousy sensation. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. And seeing different parts of it, you may understand it better, whereas with it's a mixture, yeah. it, it's got more control over you. So, in effect, this basic meditation method that uh, you teach and that you've learned, it's not so different from uh, a good application of old-fashioned introspection. No, I don't want. I don't want to equate it with old-fashioned introspection. Uh -huh. uh, I, you are looking inside and trying to understand things better. Yeah. But applying these principles of concentration, clarity, and equanimity to it mm -hmm. makes it different. And you're also doing it within an overall context. Okay. Mm -hmm. Remember, I said, find out why you want to learn meditation or mindfulness. Mm -hmm. Re yeah. Refresh yourself on that at the beginning. That overall context is having subtle effects on what you're actually doing. Uh -huh. If I'm introspecting in order to report to a researcher how certain things feel, it's, it's a whole different mental set I than see if what I'm you're trying saying. to deeply sure. understand. Mm -hmm. okay. Also, I, sh I should say that the way I teach this in my webinar course or in my books is to lead toward increased mindfulness in everyday life. Mm -hmm. You know, very few people ever got in trouble by what they felt and thought while they were sitting on a little meditation cushion yeah. or sitting up in a comfortable straight back chair. Right. But we get in trouble all the time because we're not very mindful of how we're feeling and what we're saying in real life. And we say things mm -hmm. that later, how could I have been so stupid as to say that? How thoughtless was I? No wonder she won't speak to me anymore. If you can bring more mindfulness to everyday life, it definitely reduces the suffering and mm -hmm. increases your ability to do something effective both for yourself and to help other people. The suggestion there seems to be that life itself can be a meditation. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, Shenzhen now formally defines meditation as anything you do applying the principles of concentration, clarity, and equanimity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And incidentally, I'm primarily talking with Shenzhen stuff here because it's very clearly understandable. There are other ways you can analyze meditation mm -hmm. and how to do it and so mm -hmm. forth. But he's a genius in having adapted this mm -hmm. to, you know, if, if you get real good at this, you should find a teacher like Shenzhen, not mm -hmm. me, for, you know, for getting started. I'm, I'm a good kindergarten Well, teacher. you're a, a good introductory teacher because, first of all, you're... Uh, a psychologist, and second of all, you've studied with many uh, meditation teachers along the way. And third of all, I've had enormous difficulties in learning how to meditate, so I know what that feels like. <laughs> <laughs> there are a few people who I find absolutely disgusting. They get two minutes of instruction and they experience cosmic consciousness or something like that. It's not fair. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> they make it seem so easy.